Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys are being recorded. Just here. Okay. Uh, horns. Okay, so so okay, so D is a dorsal horn or posterior horn. A is a white column, white matter, white column, lateral white column. Um, what about E? What's E? <clears throat> ventral anterior horns. Yeah, the ventral anterior horn. Awesome. Okay. Um, I think we have a picture that deals with the roots. Where is that folder? No, it's not right. Right here. I'm going to ask you guys questions about the roots. Oh, okay, we don't have it. But what about 21? What is this? Dorsal root ganglia. Yes, that's the dorsal root ganglia. Thank you, Olga. Um, so yeah, so this is the dorsal root ganglia. It connects to the dorsal part of your spinal cord. Um, here you have your white lateral white column. Then you have your posterior gray horn, your anterior gray horn, or um, ventral gray horn. Ventral, anterior, same thing. Posterior, dorsal, same thing. And then back here, here you can kind of see it. C it would be your uh, dorsal white column. Um, what about this little circle right here? What is that called? Central canal. Yes, that is your central canal. Very good. Um, again, so I'm following along with the PowerPoint that Dr. Garcia made available to you guys in his Google Drive for the lab under the exam summary exam reviews um i think you guys should really look at that if you haven't already it definitely does provide a little bit more insight on like uh, to all of the concepts that we're going over so okay so that's that's that one let's see what else do we have here all right okay who can tell me the cranial nerves that control eye movement. All of the cranial nerves that control eye movement. There's three of them. This is very important. The cranial nerves are going to be tested on your exam. Okay, so ocular motor, that's one. What else? The optic nerve, okay, so the optic nerve is sensory. So that's for sensory input. So what you're seeing from the outside, you understanding it and then processing it. Trochlear, okay. So yeah, so optic nerve is sensory. Um, I'm asking for all of the motor nerves. Yes, so ocular motor that moves your eye, uh, your eye muscles as well as, as well as your trochlear and your abducens which is awesome. So trochlear is cra cranial nerve number four, and your abducens is cranial nerve number six. Um, does anyone know what muscles specifically are moved by the trochlear nerve? So, okay, let me ask you another question then. So, how many, okay, so what are the muscles of the eye? We have uh, six of them. You can see them here, kind of. Okay, so you have medial rectus, which is on the other side of here. You have your lateral rectus, good job. What about this one? What is this one called? Okay, you have your superior oblique, which is the one that you see here going down. It's under your lateral rectus. Sorry, under your superior rectus. This one's the superior rectus. What about the one under? Your inferior rectus. Awesome. And then we're missing one. Mm 
not your medial, but your uh, superior, uh, inferior oblique, which would be this one right here that you see here. So recap, we have four rectuses. We have superior, medial, lateral, and inferior. And we have two obliques, superior oblique and inferior oblique. Now, cranial nerve number four, the trochlear nerve, will move your superior oblique muscle. And cranial nerve number six, the abducens nerve, will move your lateral rectus, which is the one that you see here. A good way to determine which one is lateral and which one is medial, well, here we see um, the nasal bone right here. So like your nose is the mid part of your body is medial. So the muscle that's closest to the nose would be medial and the muscle that is furthest from the nose would be lateral. Okay. Um, so yeah, so again, recap. Cranial nerves that move the eye muscles. There's three. Ocular motor, which does exactly what it says moves your op like your your eye your oculus i guess i don't know um your abducens and your trochlear again your abducens moves your lateral rectus and your trochlear nerve moves your superior oblique everything else is moved by your ocular motor okay um So yeah, so what's C again? Cinema this muscle? Superior rectus, awesome. Okay, just checking to make sure you guys are paying attention. Um, oh. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much the eye. Let me give you another view of the eye. Um, yeah, so this is the lateral rectus. Again, you can see your superior oblique from a better angle here. Um, what I mentioned to your classmates before, for those of you that are just tuning in, that are just tuning in, is that your exam, the pictures will not look like this. The pictures will be much more defined they are computer generated which means that the details they're much more detailed and they're more straightforward in in terms of there will be no confusion as to what is being asked in the pictures so that's really awesome for you guys okay so it's pretty much the eye okay so let's continue eye and let's work on this one so many things so many things happening here okay so What's A? What's this layer right here? What is that called? This is where all your blood vessels and your veins lie. Vitreous body? No, so this is the layers, the layers of the eye. Um, so you have three. We're not going inside. We're not going inside the the, the eye yet we have three layers let me help you out so one of these layers is actually red and you can tell that it's red because when someone takes a picture of you at night with the flash on you get a red eye effect and that's because that flash is um the choroid yes that's the choroid this one right here a is the choroid the the layer that I was mentioning is actually your retina, which is this one right here. That's where all the light is being absorbed. Um, that's why it's black on the outside and red on the inside. And lastly, what about this white layer? What is that called? We see it every time we look at someone's eyes. When we speak to them or if we're just staring at someone's eyes. It starts with a S, with an S. The sclera, very good, Abraham. Yes, the sclera. Okay, so from outermost to innermost, first we have the sclera, which is this white part right here. Then we have the choroid. And lastly, we have the retina. Okay. Um, now, we have two chambers. What's the name of this chamber?
or a cavity, I guess you can. Okay, so it's not the anterior because it's not furthest to the outside. It's more internal, so it would be, what's the opposite of anterior? Posterior, very good. So this right here is the posterior cavity, posterior chamber of your eye. Oh, that's okay. So this right here. And then here we have a chamber, we have a cavity. You can, I know you can't really see it well. Um, but this is your anterior chamber, anterior cavity. Okay. Um, so what about this thing right here? Let me draw on it. The lens. Yes, very good. This thing right here is the lens. That's what allows you to see. Some of us have weird lenses or our, the shape of our cornea isn't exactly like how it's supposed to be in order for us to have 20-20 vision. Um, and where is the cornea? Can anyone? Well, <laughs> you can't really point to it. So let me see. What's up? One. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Inside the anterior chamber. Yes, yeah, so it's found in the anterior chamber. It's the outermost layer of cells that you see here. That's where your cornea is. I think it would even be, I think that's number three or eight. I don't even know. Um, but yeah, that's your cornea. Your cornea is the outermost layer of cells that is um, anterior to your anterior chamber. Um, okay. What do we call the, the part of the eye that has color? That distinguishes people from having brown color, blue, the iris. Yes, very good, the iris. And I can't see it here. Let's see if there's another, there's a better picture of it. No, there really isn't. But I promise you in the pictures that you're going to have on your exam, they're going to be so, so clear. There is no confusion whatsoever. Okay, moving on. Um, what about this thing right here? It's where light comes in. What is that called? It's usually black. It dilates with the amount of that is present on the outside. The pupil, yes, very good, the pupil, which is just a vacant hole for light to travel through through to your lens and to the inner part of your eye. Um, what else do we need to know here? Questions? The fovea, okay, it's the fovea, that's right here. Fovea centralis. What, what, what do you have in your fovea? That is very important. What about the fovea? is the most important. Oh, it's this one right here. Okay, so so this circle right here, let me draw on it so you can see with my pen. I'm just gonna draw in, I don't know, purple. This circle right here that you see is your uh, fovea centralis, and then this one right here is your macula lutea. Your fovea centralis is where all of your rods are found, and your rods, I believe, are the ones that account for your color vision. No, sorry, your cones. Your cones account for your color vision, which is in your macula, and your rods account for your for the distinguishing between black and white. Your blind spot is found right where the optic nerve it, the optic nerve comes in. So like right here, the optic disc, this is known as your blind spot. And you also have a high concentration of cones. Um, so yeah. So quick recap, we have two cavities. We have the posterior cavity. Oh, what type of humor do we have here in our posterior cavity? Is it? Close, it's the other one. If it's not the aqueous, it's the vitreous. Very good. So, yeah, so 
we have vitreous humor in our posterior cavity. Um, it's a more jelly-like substance. And we have aqueous humor in our anterior cavity. And our anterior cavity is composed of the anterior chamber and posterior chamber. So there are two chambers within our anterior cavity. And there's only one chamber within our posterior cavity, which is this giant thing right here. Aqueous humor, vitreous humor, jelly, watery. Um, lens, the iris, the pupil, cornea, um, your sclera, choroid, your retina, your fovea, centralis, high concentration of rocks, your macula, high concentration of cones, your optic disc, which is where your nerve comes in to innervate, and at the same time creates a blind spot. And I think that's pretty much what you guys need to know. Any questions on the eye, on the on the interior of the eye, on the muscles of the eye, the cranial nerves? Let me know so we can keep going. Nope. Oh, okay. perfect. Everything clear. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys for your response. I really appreciate it. So, let's keep going. So, um, I think we're going to do all the special senses first, and then we're going to go back to the brain since that one's a little bit more convoluted. So, next is your ear. All right. All right, all right, all right. So, very quickly, what are the three tiny bones in your ear from outer to in so starting with the one that's connected to your tympanic membrane what is that called so again so what are the names of the of your auditory ossicles starting from the one that's connected to your tympanic membrane to the inside I'll help you out. It starts with an M. Your malleus. So the semicircular canals are these guys right here. Do you see here? These are your semicircular canals. Okay. So this here, the very first one is your malleus. Very good, Nicole. What about the next one? What is the malleus connected to? It's this thing right here. The incus, very good. And lastly, right here, this one. It starts with an I. Uh, sorry, with an S. Yes, the stapes. Awesome. So your malleus, your incus, and your stapes. Your malleus is the one that's connected to your tympanic membrane right here. Your incus is in between the two, connecting your stapes and your malleus. And lastly, your stapes is connected to the oval window of your vestibule. This thing right here is called your vestibule. Um, we have our semicircular canals, which is what Olga mentioned. Right here, we have three of them because we live in a three-dimensional world, which means that we have to have 60 rotation like uh we have to be aware or receive sensory information from not from but in 360 degrees so that's how you can tell that you're upside down if you close your eyes on a roller coaster um what about this guy number c or letter c what's this guy kind of looks like a snail When I was studying this, my friend, she made an illusion. She called it the Coachella. But it's not the Coachella, it's the... The cochlea. Very good, Camila. Yes, it's the cochlea. So again, so this is your cochlea, your vestibule, your cochlea and your vestibule are together. together. Um, you have the oval window, which is this thing right here, where it connects your stapes to your incus, to your malleus, that then connects to your tympanic membrane um, or eardrum. 
We also have our semicircular canals, which 180 of each other, which is why they look they're perpendicular to one another. Um, and lastly, what about this nerve right here? What is this entire nerve? What it's called? What is it called? And what cranial nerve is it? What number? Okay, let's see. The vestibulo. Okay, so it's connected to your vestibule, but it's also connected to your cochlea. So, what is like together, what is it called? Let me see. Yes, your vestibular cochlear nerve. Very good. And what cranial nerve is it? Like, what number? See? Eight, yes, that's cranial nerve number eight. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so, okay, another thing that we have here this is your, okay, outer, inner, middle, and outer, inner, middle, and deep ear. Deep? I don't think it's deep, but this one's deeper. This is your middle ear, this is part of your ear. And this is your outer ear. Um, this thing right here is called your. You can. It has two names. What is it called, guys? See, the auditory tube. Yes, it's your auditory tube, otherwise known as your eustachian tube. Um, okay. Well, hey, what is this thing called? Mm, no, this is your external ear. It's your ear canal. Think of it as a canal that carries earwax from the outside, from the inside out, or water from the outside in. It's your auditory canal, your ear canal. Um, real cool thing about your auditory tube or your stachian tube is when you're little, you... Um, this tube is more horizontal, so something along the lines of this. Um, and that's why little kids have are higher have a higher tendency of acquiring ear infections. It's because the, the, the bacteria from the mouth can easily travel to the middle ear, whereas in it's, it's more slanted. It's at, a, it's at a larger angle, a more acute angle, so like let's say 45 or 40, and it's harder for the bacteria to crawl all the way up there. Um, you know, because of gravity and stuff. So, so yeah. Um, lastly, this thing right here. Boom, 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 boom. What is this thing called? Your pina. Yes, very good. Pina and oracle. Pina slash oracle. Yes, very good. Very important. Keep that in mind. I know that everything else is very important, but we tend to forget this one, and you know that's an easy point in your exam. So remember this, okay? Um, any questions on the ear? We good? Questions, questions, questions. Recap. Okay, real quick recap. So from the outside in. So we have our auricle or our pina. We have our ear canal, right? We have our tympanic membrane, which is part of the middle ear, which is where we can also find our auditory tube or eustachian tube. In here, we have the three of the smallest bones in the body. We have the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The, the malleus is the one that connects to your tympanic membrane. Your incus connects your malleus to your stapes, and your stapes is connected to your vestibule through the oval window. Um, here in our vestibule, we have three semicircular canals. 
each perpendicular to one another. We also have our cochlea, which is also connected to our vestibule. And this is all, all the sensory information that these beautiful organs receive is sent over to our brain through cranial nerve number eight, otherwise known as our vestibular cochlear nerve. We good? Awesome. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. It's back in the comment. Okay, so now let's get into the brain, the brains, the brains, the brains. All right, so many pictures of the brain. Okay. So let's forget about the arrow for one second, and I'm going to ask you a question based on the exam review that we had, not this week, because this week I didn't speak to you guys, it was last week. You guys remember tentorium cerebelli? What is that? What is that? What does it do? I can't promise you extra credit if you answer my question, but I can promise you that you, if you can recall this information, you're going to do well. Okay, tentorium cerebelli was part of your dura mater. It's a fold in the dura mater that separates the cerebellum from the cerebrum. Again, it's the fold in the dura mater that separates the, cere the cerebrum from the cerebellum. So it's a little, it's a little partition there, and it's caused, or it, it's made up of your dura mater, tentorium cerebelli. What does it separate? Your cerebrum from your cerebellum. Okay, very important, very important. Um, what else? Okay, so that was pretty much it. So now let's get down to it. Um, what's eye? An eye is pointing to this little white thing right there. Your thalamus. Okay, so we have. I don't think I is the thalamus, though. We have the amygdala. Hmm, let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Because I don't think I is the thalamus. Oh, it is the thalamus. You are right, Olga. Oh, and what part of your brain is that? Is that diencephalon, mesencephalon? What part of your, like, where does your thalamus fall into? Diencephalon. Very good. Yes. Very important. Very important information to remember um, each of those. The mesencephalon, the diencephalon. Uh, I forgot the other two, but very important for you. Okay, moving on. It was in the quiz. Oh, very good. So again, for those of you that tuned in later, um, Professor Dr. Garcia told me that if you guys are doing really well in the quiz, in the quizzes, you guys will not have a problem with the exam. Um, the quizzes um, are a good, uh, I guess, indicator of how you're going to do on the exam. So. Uh, what about this guy right here? This little bulge right here. The little bulge of the seahorse. The little pouch. What's that? What do you call that? The pond. It's very good. Um, what about this guy right here? This big thing right here. This thing in brown. The cerebellum. Again, very good. And... Cerebellum, awesome. And what was that thing called that separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum? Uh, 
We'll just run over it. Starts with a T. It's two words. Starts with a T. I wish I could like rhyme it out for you, but you can't see me. It's part of the dura mater. It's a fold that the dura mater creates to separate the cerebrum from the cerebellum. It starts with a T. Has a weird name. It's tent, no, tentorium cerebelli. Again, tentorium cerebelli is the dural fold that separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum. Okay, very important for you guys to know. Okay, moving on. Let's see, we have a different angle here. Oh, what's this red thing right here? I'll give you a hint. It creates CSF. <laughs> creates CSF, which is the cerebrospinal fluid, which has pendulum cells that help you know, lubricate the brain. It's kind of like the same one that we have in our eye. Start to the C. The choroid plexus, very good. Yes, the choroid plexus. We have a choroid in our eye, but we have a choroid plexus in our brain. Very good. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. What about 23? What's this thing right here? Um, it starts with a P. Yes, your penile gland. Very good. Okay. And what about these structures right below it? And draw. Boom, boom. We went over it. Together as a whole. It's called. Okay, so the one on top is your superior colliculi. Very good. What about the one on the bottom? Your inferior colliculi. And together they're called the corpora quadrigemina. Corpora quadrigemina. Very good. Um, what else do we need to know here? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, right here. This. What is this called? Let's see. Your medulla oblongata. Very good. Very, very good. Um, what about this thing right here? It goes all the way down. Central canal. Very good. Yes. And that means that around this surrounding is your spinal cord. Okay, hmm. if I can hit you guys with a hard one since you guys know all this. What about this thing right here? Oh, let me erase that. Make it thinner. What about this thing right here? Boop, boop, boop. Your cerebral aqueduct, very good, yes. So what does your cerebral aqueduct connect? It connects two structures. What are those two structures? Blank ventricle to blank ventricle. Nope, not the thalamus. Third ventricle to the... What's after three? Four, yes, to the fourth ventricle. Very good. So here you have your third ventricle. Um, there is another picture that I can show you for the ventricles, and it's this one right here. So here you have... Um, First and second, or, fir or first and second, doesn't really matter. Here, over here, we have our third. This is our cerebral aqueduct. And lastly, we, this is our fourth ventricle there that we have. So third, cerebral aqueduct, and fourth. Now let me go back to this picture. 
third cerebral aqueduct and fourth right here okay um let's see what else Did you guys have to go over very quickly let me see let me stop sharing my screen the fissure okay give me one second let me see something okay is it that is it that Okay. Okay, we did that, we did that, we did that. Any question? The sulcus. Okay, yeah, give me one second. I'm looking at the exam, see what else to go over. Okay, so let's go back over here. All right, so we went over this, went over that. Brain, let's look at the brain. Let's look at another version of the brain. Okay, awesome. So, can anyone tell me what this is right here? It's a line that divides the frontal from the parietal. It also separates your primary motor neuron from your, what is it called? Your central sulcus, very good. Yes, that's your central sulcus. It divides your primary motor neuron from your primary um, sensory neuron. Um, what do we call this line right here? Is there a name for that line? Yeah, I think there is. The lateral fissure. Hmm. Oh. Okay, so this one is the parietal occipital sulcus. The line right there. We have the central sulcus. And you said that you guys needed to go over the fissure. Fissure. I don't know if there's fissures in the brain. Um, let's just keep going and then we'll get back to longitudinal fissure. Oh that sounds familiar. Let's see here. Divides left and right. Oh that's right. Yeah. But that's on top and we don't have well, it would be up here. We don't have a top view for some reason, but, um, so yeah, so longitudinal longitudinal divides left and right. We have our central focus, which divides frontal from parietal, and we have our parietal occipital sulcus, which divides our parietal from our occipital. Um, and let me see if there's one for the, for the temporal, what is that one called? Well, I'll go back to that one. Lateral sulcus. Okay, beautiful. Um, yeah, or temporal sulcus. Superior temporal sulcus. Lateral sulcus. All right. Moving on. Um, what else do we need to know? Oh, this one. Very important. What's A? What's this blue thing right here? Let's see. P 
Nokia matter? No. So this, uh, it, this, this blue thing. So we're not looking at uh, the the matter that is enveloping the brain, but rather um, the venous system that is carrying out the blood. So this would be in between your arachnoid. Oh, sorry. This would be within your arachnoid space. Yes, superior sagittal sinus. Your SSS. That is your superior sagittal sinus. Okay, what else do we have here? Um, let's see, I'm looking at pictures of the brain. What is... Oh, wait, we haven't gone over that one. Apologies for the, for the noise. But either way, let's see. Starts with a C. <laughs> Connects uh, both right and left hemispheres together. The huge amount of nerve. Yeah, corpus callosum. Very good. It um it has a huge amount of nerve tracts and stuff, and it's very important. Um. Do, 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 do. So cerebellum. Oh, what about this this white thing inside the cerebellum? What is that called? So they call it something, something tree. Giving you a hint there. No, it's called arbor vitae. Arbor vitae. Let me write it down for you. Arbor vitae. Otherwise known as the tree of life, woohoo! Because the cerebellum control controls very basic functions, very primal functions. Um, you know, motor movement and all of that. Uh, a lot of animals have that, and so do we. We share that in common with a lot of animals. Um, okay, so we went over the ventricles, cerebellum, the canal, the choroid plexus. Um, are there any questions that you have for me before we move on from the brain? Fox cerebri. Okay, yeah, so Fox cerebri is the the layer of the dura matter that separates um That covers the cerebrum. It covers it completely. Um, you can't really see that here, though. Um, the other one that's most important here, you can see sensorium cerebelli. Because here, this is your dura matter. This is the, the gray thing right here. It's your dura matter. And you see how it like folds in, and then back out again. Um, so the Fox cerebri is the most important one. Uh, sorry, tentorium cerebelli. Fox cerebri just is the layer of the dura matter that covers all of the brain. Um, but in, in the pictures, you really can't see that one. And from your exam, um, I didn't see that one. So know it, but don't worry about it for right now. Just keep that in your, in your reservoir for when you take anatomy two. And later on, if you want to pursue anything in the health sciences, it's always really good to know that one. Okay, what else do we have? Oh my goodness, the neuron. We need to go over this. Okay, what is A? Let's see. Dendrites. So dendrites are the are the protrusions that you see here yeah exactly there these are the synaptic and synaptic knobs of a neuron so let's say this this neuron is connecting with another neuron that looks exactly like it at the end of that neuron you have something that looks like this which are your synaptic knobs your synaptic terminals um and that's what's 
that's what we're looking at here. Uh, what about the blue things inside? What are these called? Starts with an N. Two words. N B. Okay, let me help you out here. They're called nasal bodies. Nasal bodies. Um, and let me write that out for you. Nasal, nasal bodies. And basically what that is is that it's the the Golgi apparatus of the axon. It has adapted to its function. So the organelles of the cells adapt to the function that that cell carries out. So like, you know how a person that likes to surf will have a room in their house that it basically is waterproof so that they can hang all their surfboards or a person that likes to sew will have a room in their house with their sewing kits and their fabrics and the pins and all of that. Um, they've adapted a room in their house to account for what like, right? Same, same goes for the, for, for the cells. So the axon has adapted its, its Golgi apparatuses to become these blue things, which are the nasal bodies, which help in carrying um, messages from this axon to the following axon. And the way it does it, does it is by sending that signal to the nucleus and having that neurotransmitter be produced then the nasal bodies or the Golgi apparatuses, same, they're the same thing. They send that signal down, they move it down, doo, 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 down to where it's being sent to the end of the, the terminal. And then here at the synaptic end, we release that into the synaptic cleft. So there's a little space in between these two so that the next axon can receive that signal. So yeah, so uh, C, or these little blue things are called nasal bodies. Um, what is this thing called right here? What's E? Okay, so E is the myelin sheets. Yes, very good. B is the axon hillock. So E, myelin sheets. B, axon hillock. Okay. Here inside we have mitochondria, and then in between two myelin sheets we have something that's called so this is the axon. All of this this long thing right here is the axon, but in between here, so let me draw on it. So right here, in between these two, we have something that's called no Duranvir. Very good. Yeah, so and when one myelin sheath comes to an end and the other one starts, there's a little space in between. That's called a node of Ranvier. Ranvier, whatever. I don't know if he's French. Um, right here, this this layer, this gray layer, what is this called? <clears throat> See? The neurolemma, very good. That's the layer. The, the cell membrane of the neuron. And what about this layer right here? It has to do what, with, um, it pertains to what this thing is called. So if this is an axon, we're looking at the, the cell layer, the membrane of the axon, and what do we call that? The axolemma, yes, very good. So, neurolemma, axolemma, myelin sheets. In between two myelin sheets, you have a node of Ranvier. Ranvier. Um, here, that's the nucleus. Uh, here, we have the axon hillock. These white things, these white protrusions are the dendrites. Here, we have 
the nasal bodies. This is the nucleus. And here we have our synaptic knobs. You can see one that's cut open. I've never noticed this, but yeah, it's cut open. Um, and that's where we release our neurotransmitters. Any questions? See? Nope. Okay, awesome. So let me reconvene again. Let's see what else you guys need to know. <clears throat> Okay, while I do this, um, oh, okay, I should, should look that up. Um, do, do, do. Oh, okay, let's do that really quickly, and then I can show you guys a slide that you need to see. Okay, so we're good here. Um, this guy. Let's go over here. So here we have the spinal cord. It's labeled more intense than the one that we had last time. Um, this right here, what do you call this? Before it gets here, what is this called? What's A? Ventral root, yes, very good. Um, what about when we, what about the one behind, one, this one right here? We said this is ventral, so this is dorsal root, very good. Oh my goodness, why does that keep happening? I'm so sorry. Um, what else? Oh, we have, so we have three horns. I don't know if you guys can see them. Let me draw them out for you really quickly. Oh, terrible color. Let's use blue. Make it a little thinner. So we have this horn right here. We have this horn, and then we have this horn. So we went over this one, and we went over this one. We said that this is your dorsal, dorsal, right, dorsal. This is your anterior right but then anterior dorsal but then what's this one called lateral yes very good Olga. you read my mind lateral horn very good yeah so this is your lateral horn so we have three so we have dorsal um dorsal horn anterior or ventral horn and then we have our lateral horn we have our dorsal or ventral Sorry, our ventral or anterior root, and we have our dorsal or posterior root. Okay. Now we've done that. So now let's let me show you a slide of what an uh, an axon looks like. Axon slide. No, not an axon. Um, what are those called again? Neurons. Neurons slide. Sorry. I'm a little burnt out, as you can see. Um, boom. This right here, this is a beauty. No, I want the picture. How do I open the picture? So this thing right here, this is gorgeous. So this is our neuron as you can see here we have the nucleus which is where we have all of that command structure that is being like that's the one that dictates what the neuron is going to do what information it's going to send out here you can see that it has its its dendrites coming out in every direction here we have other nerve cells neurons um but this one is really big it's probably like astrocytes, which is a different type of nerve cell. Um, and then here, these long parts right here, this long part right here would be your axon, okay? So this is your entire neuron. We have dendrites. But then the longest part, the one that's like connecting to other things, 
the longest, longest part is called your axon. Okay, so you have a neuron, you can have dendrites, and these dendrites, as you can see, they may look like axons, but these are much shorter as compared to this giant one here. Okay, so in order to distinguish what an axon would look like in, in a slide, is it's always going to be the one that is the longest of the branching patterns. Okay, so let me, let me give you another example. Um, dendrite nucleus, nucleolus. There's just so many of them. Oh, look. So here, these would be your axons. Oh, sorry. These are your dendrites. This is your axon because this is where everything condenses into it. So let me open in a new window. New tab. So these are your axons, axons. This giant one right here that everything seems to condense into, like if it was a slide for um, a water slide that you have multiple people like racing down. This, this is your axon right here. The same goes with this one. You see, everyone comes in and goes down here. Information receiving end, information, information leaving end, okay? information receiving end, information leaving end. And this one, you can even argue that this is another axon here too because it's a little thicker than these guys. Okay. Um, what else? Any questions? Real quick. Let's name these. What's B? Hello? Is anyone there? Guys, can you? Oh, I never saw that. These guys? Oh, okay, so these are the auditory ossicles. So these are the bones in your, in your, in your ear. Yeah, so um, from left to right, this looks like a mallet, otherwise known as your malleus. This one? Looks like an anvil, you know, like the ones that they throw cartoons. Um, like when was it Looney Tunes that uh the coyote was always chasing the roadrunner and he would try to hurt him and catch him. This looks like one of those anvils that he would drop from like really high heights. Otherwise known as your incus, anvil incus, and this is your stapes that kind of looks like a stirrup, like the things that uh you put on horse saddles so that you can go horseback riding. Where you put your feet, is that foothold, or when you're um, riding your static bike and you have to put your feet in the thing and then like strap them down, same idea, your stapes. So malleus, incus, and stapes. These are your auditory ossicles, three smallest bones in your body. Um, now I don't have a picture of the plexuses, but you guys need to know the plexuses. So Let's go here. Let's go brachial plexus. Um, you have it in your you have it in your lectures, a uh, PowerPoint, and they're a bit more. It's a little bit more um more straightforward. So you have an, a brachial plexus, you have these guys, these nerves that come from your, let's go. These nerves come from your spinal cord, more specifically your C-spine, and one of your thoracic. As you can see, they branch together and then branch out, and each of these controls a portion of your arm. Um, so yeah, so let's take a minute to look for that slide. I that PowerPoint, I can give you guys that PowerPoint and then we'll be done. So give me one second. Are you guys um 
has everybody that has asked me for their hours given them your hours have i given you your hours if you haven't by let's see yes i have a question talk to me while i look for the slides you can hear you. Yeah, okay i um i uploaded the the hours under lecture okay for lecture there was a tab there to upload them but my question was because i asked i emailed dr garcia but he hasn't replied i asked him if we upload them in lab as well because there's there was a, a space for that to be uploaded but it's not um like you're not able to upload anything on that page but there's a slot there that says uh, you know the hours for the layer on lab as well so that's my question like do we upload it there as well okay i'll i'll make a note i I'm gonna speak to him today, so I'll let you know. But up from my understanding, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that he has. I think if you did one, you did both. Okay. But okay. I'll get back to you on that. So I'll send you an email later today. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So let's see. Um, do, 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 do. Hmm. The flex I, the plexus is. Is it under this one? Not the other one. I also sent out um for you guys. He pre-records YouTube lectures, and he puts them on YouTube. Well, he pre-records with lectures, and he puts them on YouTube. Um. And. They have a lot of really helpful and useful information. And one of them, I believe, is that he talks about all the nerves, the plexi. There we go, I found it. So this is, so let me download it. Let's see, download. So if you haven't taken a look at those videos, I suggest that you do. Um, they're in your announcements. I try to send them out for everyone to have. If you don't have them, let me know so I can share with you all the videos that he has um, uploaded as of late. And and yeah, Let's see downloads thirteen. Where did that go? Oh. So give a second, it's uploading. Do, 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 do. One more week. Um, you guys don't have a final for lab. This is your last exam. And for lecture, it would be up until exam six. So if you guys are all caught up with everything, then you are basically done with anatomy one. Woohoo! Super exciting. Um, who is taking anatomy two from you guys? Oh, literally everyone. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if you guys have already registered with, uh, for Anatomy 2 with Dr. Garcia, but if you haven't, um, uh, please do so if you want to. If you did, okay, awesome. Yeah, he's a really great professor. Um, he, what, he is very thorough with his um, explanations, and it's really awesome because he relates a lot of the thing learned, all the concepts that we learn with real life. So it just makes it that much more engaging because these are things, we're studying the human body, we're human. Um, and on top of that, he's relating it to everyday life, which is really, really cool. I find that very interesting. I did summer term, hopefully won't be too hard, you know, the school will be open for summer. So, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, um, or continue online. So from my understanding, we're gonna continue being online. There has not been any speak or talk about everything moving back to normal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, so from right now that you guys will know as, as soon as I know, um, we're being updated. Yeah, essentially, yeah. So we're being updated uh, weekly, I think, or maybe biweekly now that the semester is ending. Um, the, the updates will be more frequent, so just look out for your, add your MDC email, 
and hopefully that they'll give us some sort of information. It's not uploading, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay. Um, Summer, are you taking are you taking him for the full twelve weeks, or is it gonna be a six week course? Okay. Okay. So, the plexus is. We have the cer cervical plexus. Um. These nerves come from the C spine, from what I mentioned to you guys before. We also have our brachial plexus, C spine, the lower part of the C spine. So we have our cervical plexus. So C one to C five. Then we have our brachial plexus, which is C5, C1. And then we have these nerves that basically control the movement of our arm. Going down the arm, we then see that we have the ulnar nerve, which is uh, more lateral. Yeah, more, no, sorry, more medial because it's closer to the, to the body. And then we have um, our radial nerve. So radial nerve next to the radius right here. Radius of the ra yeah, so the radius. Um, and then we have our ulnar nerve, which is the one that's on top of our ulna. And then it innervates our forearm and our hand and our palm. So real quick, you guys need to know all of the plexuses and the nerves that are most important. So these nerves that are de denotated here, the ulnar and the radial nerve. This information can be found in the chapter 13 PowerPoint. Oh. Yes, this is for practicum three. This is, there are going to be some questions about the plexuses here. Oh. Yes. So, so chapter 13 PowerPoint, I found it in this module right here. Um, module six, brain, cranial nerves, and senses. It's, um, sorry, chapter 14. PowerPoint. Oh, why it's mislabeled. Spinal cord and reflexes. Oh, my bad. He has different numbers here. Here, <laughs> when you click here, when you click on one of these, it's going to take you to the Google Drive. We're going to click on chapter 13. We're going to click on this one spinal cord and nerves. Okay, so chapter 13 in the Google Drive. Don't get it confused. The numbers are all over the place for some reason. I don't know. Okay. Laura, are you able to do a review for muscles this afternoon? For muscles? Okay, so some of us have not done. Okay, that's okay. I have already, um, the recording is there. So if you go into Blackboard, real quick, let me show you. You go into live exam review. Oh my God, it's not that one. You go into live session. And you look under this tab under recordings for the lab. It should say Laura exam review to practicum. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So uh, here you would do it under BSC 2085 lab. You would go under live session. You would click on this one recordings exam review lab recording one so this was four nine and it was an hour and 20 uh, and that's the practicum too okay so you guys can do that okay so real quick before is the practicum three going to be more about identifying parts of a module right rather than its functions so yeah so you're going to have to identify um this is how we were doing with the pictures that I was doing with you guys. Um, the pictures will not be the same pictures that I'm showing you. The pictures will be electronic pictures, pictures from books that are much more detailed. You will be able to very easily determine what part is being asked. Um, no functions. I don't, I, from what I recall, there were no functions that you guys needed to know. Um, 
just what is this? What does it separate? What are these? What what are the nerves that are part of the brachial plexus that control the forearm and the arm, the forearm and, and the hand? Uh, the same goes for the nerves of the lumbar plexus. So you need to know the nerves. The lumbar plexus, you know your obturator, your lateral femoral, your lumbar plexus femoral, so this nerve right there. And you need to know your sacral plexus, you need to know your sciatic nerve. Um, know that your sciatic nerve literally travels down your leg to the very, very, very bottom. Um, it's, it's a very important nerve, it's a really, really big nerve, it innervates all of your leg. Um, and, and that's pretty much it. So know this. So again, chapter 13 in the Google Drive, spinal cord and nerve reflexes. Go down, scroll down to slide 38 and down. Go over all of those plexuses that he has there and know them. Know what I went over with the, the cranial nerves. Know all of your cranial nerves. Know the cranial nerves that innervate uh, your eyes, your ears, know what the cranial nerve, your facial nerve does, your trigeminal, and your vagus, very important. So stuff from the lecture. Um, know your spinal cord, the, the pictures that I showed you. So this stuff, oh my goodness. Oh, this stuff right here, know your know the parts of the brain that we went over so like your superior superior sagittal soreness sinus ventral and dorsal root yes exactly um this one right here your cerebellum your pons your medulla your spinal cord your ventricles the choroid plexus that produces sf thalamus your corpus callosum know all of that um, and I think you'll be fine um, again if you have had any trouble with the quizzes I would suggest um, if you can go back to your notes or maybe to the quizzes if he lets you review them um, sorry about this I have other students reaching out um, if you have done well on the, on the quizzes go back and review and review those notes. If you haven't, go back and review the notes that you may have taken. If you jot it down like, hey, I didn't know this one, maybe I should write it down so I can study it for the exam. Um, and yeah. So basically, you know the parts of the brain, ear, spinal cord, nervous plexus, cranial nerves. Yes, parts of the brain, ear, spinal cord, cranial nerves, the eye, which is the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint is PowerPoint chapter 13. Chapter 13, chapter 13 in the Google Drive. Um, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Today my hours are very limited. I work until like three-ish, four-ish, and yeah. Next week, I will be available for you guys. Um, but please keep in mind that because it's finals week, um, everything is going to be a little bit of a, of a crunch. So if you can, do not leave everything to the very last minute. If you, for any reason, need um, your hours to be like, given to you, um, or if you want to check your hours, whatever, um, let me know. Send me an email. You guys want to email. You can use my mymdc.net email. You can use my other email, my work email. Because it's a little 13, yes. Um, you can use all of that information and reach out to me if you need anything else from me. Okay, guys? So this is Raman Ended. If you guys have any questions, let me know now. You're welcome, guys. I hope you all do great on your exam. The hours are mandatory. No, no, they're not. I think he gives you guys like extra credit, I think, for for doing the hours. If I'm not mistaken. Also, you can, if you signed up with us, you could have received $100 in 
a stipend. Um, but yeah, you're welcome, guys. Uh, thank you for joining me. How do we get that? Oh, okay. So if you are, did you sign the contract with the with the layer? Yes. Um, you have done your hours. Are you gonna pass your class? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, once we finish up with the semester, so not next week, but the following week, we're gonna input all grades and stuff, and that. Uh, stipend will be mailed out to you um, in the following weeks. So just keep a lookout for that. Uh, you will know. Um, I'll, I'm going to try to send everybody that has that is going to receive one an email so that you know to look out for it. Okay. I know, right? It's 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 a great it's a great program. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. You're all free to go. Thank you so much for listening to me talk for an hour and something minutes. Um, and take care. Yeah, likewise.